with all the options available for home coffee grinders in 2021, is the niche still worth it? Or should you opt for one of the newer options? friends welcome back i hope you are doing extra well today it's so good to see you now before we get into today's topic and i'm really excited about this one if this is the first time that we're meeting hey my name is kyle and i want to help you make better coffee at home now if you're a coffee lover or an espresso geek or you just want to learn more about brewing coffee at home consider tamping that subscribe button and like button down below it's actually a huge help enabling more videos like this truly youtube watches those stats like a hawk so i'd really appreciate it and then Let's get right to it. Now, if you've clicked on this video, you're probably wondering the question I'm pondering in the title. The Niche Zero, a highly sought after home coffee grinder. If you're looking for quality, low retention, and a grinder for your home, is the Niche Zero still worth it in 2021? Well, in this video, we're going to address this by tackling a few questions. Number one, what is the deal with the Niche Zero? So let's give some context to the rise of the Niche Zero and its popularity. Number two, we're gonna do a breakdown of a year in review of using this grinder. See, I've owned it for a year, so I wanna talk about the good and the bad, and then just give you an updated review of using this grinder after one year. Number three is if we're going to be looking at a home grinder, what alternative options are available in 2021? And then lastly, at the end of this video, I want you to be able to answer the question, is the Niche Zero the best option for me? today. So <laughs> let's dive into this. You see, the Niche Zero was introduced in an Indiegogo campaign in 2017. It's that name, the Niche Zero, that shares its desire to resolve a huge issue with grinding coffee at home. Coffee grounds being stuck inside the coffee grinder after grinding fresh coffee, or in other words, retention. Now this is pretty common just within grinding coffee, both in the cafe and at home. And it's a frustrating reality that many specialty coffee enthusiasts began to recognize in the past decade or so as the popularity of home espresso grew. Fresh coffee becomes stale inside the grinder between grinding sessions. And when new coffee is ground, that older coffee mixes with the fresh coffee, it's just not a good situation. Now, this really becomes an issue in changing coffees or even just changing brew methods from filter coffee to espresso with the same grinder. So when Niche launched the Zero, it not only addressed this, but it actually redefined this. With less than 0.2 of a gram of retention on a bad day, people started to take attention of this little company. Home barista forums and Reddit began chanting the name. <laughs> Now, Niche wasn't the first zero retention grinder and I need to address that because there were others before it, but no one did it at the price point for the quality that it provided. The ability to brew fantastic espresso and brew filter coffee with one grinder, the simple design and easy workflow, the metal chassis in a coffee world filtered with cheap plastics using 63 millimeter Mazer conical bursts and rocking the wood and KitchenAid retro styling, a British small father son company making it all happen, it was unique and it was special. But every device has their pros and cons, so let's quickly talk about it with the Niche. So let's start off with some of the good things that I love about the Niche Zero, and it's gotta start with this grind quality. And the Niche Zero just honestly doesn't disappoint. It produces fluffy grinds that are consistent and make great tasting espresso. It's also very good for filter coffee with some limitations that we're gonna talk about in this video, but the ability to do both filter and espresso from one grinder is incredibly convenient and definitely sought after. Now, another huge pro with the Niche that we need to celebrate is the design. Now, I'm not necessarily talking about the aesthetics here, though I do think they are pretty great. I'm more talking about the form factor. We've got a small grinder that is built fully out of metal with very few plastic pieces. It's durable, it's reliable with no issues over the past year for me, and it's simple. The workflow is wonderful to use. It's not something you think about using every day, which is what you want with the grinder. You don't wanna wake up and wonder what grind setting you last use or having to figure out how to adjust grinds. It's just easy to use, it's simple. The workflow is a breeze and definitely wonderful to use every single day. Now, another huge pro with the Niche Zero that is kind of obvious, but we need to address is it's low retention. Without the low retention on the Niche Zero, this is just another coffee grinder. So 
That's a huge pro and definitely needs to be celebrated because so many grinders have tried to achieve this even after the Niche Zeros were launched and haven't been able to do so, especially at this price point. So huge up on the Niche. And speaking of price, again, another huge pro here. Now, while this is an expensive grinder, it's very competitive in the coffee home grinder market. And again, especially before this grinder's release, there wasn't a lot on the market for this price point for what it provided. And even to this day, there are still not a lot of grinders that compete with the price of the niche, but we'll talk about that more later in this video. So we need to address some of the things that I haven't loved in my experience in dealing with the niche or helping other people in their purchase of a niche. And the first one being the consistent stock issues. It's a popular grinder, there's no doubt there, but it can be really frustrating when you want to just buy a coffee grinder and it's hard to do so at the niche. These can go way more expensive in the aftermarket. I've seen these go for double in price on eBay, which is just absolutely ridiculous and shouldn't happen, especially in this industry. I, it's just so crazy to think that people are buying these for so expensive, but it is frustrating. I get it. We live in a world where stock is just commonly an issue, especially when it comes to computer chips and other things. But that being said, this has been going on before COVID. There's always been stock issues with the niche, except for when it first came out. I do need to give them the credit. It seems like their Europe stock is a lot more more available these days, but within North America, it's still very hard to get a niche zero. So take that for what you will. Another thing I need to address with the niche zero, it is not perfect for brewing filter coffee. It can create many finds that are frustrating at times, depending on the brew methods and styles that you're brewing with. Now, a big reason for this is this is an espresso grinder that can do filter coffee. I think deceivingly over the past year or so, especially within this COVID-19 season, where you've seen a lot of popularity in the Niche Zero on Instagram and other social media platforms, it has been promoted as the perfect grinder for both brew methods. And to be honest, I've even stated that in past videos as well, but after using this in a year, I need to address that this is not the perfect grinder for filter brewing coffee. It's a fantastic fantastic espresso grinder, don't get me wrong. And a big reason for that is that 63 millimeter Maz or conical burst set is designed for espresso. When it comes to filter coffee, that cannot translate in the best way. Now, depending on the way that you like to brew your coffee, this might be absolutely fine. And for me, this is definitely something that I use daily for filter coffee, especially my wife. She loves the niche zero. She loves using it. But depending on your brew method, it might actually be very, very frustrating. And there's a limited range in what you can use this grinder for for filter coffee. Another thing that I've been really frustrated with the niche zero and talking with so many people who own this grinder is this long break-in period that ties with the previous point that we just talked about. Now, depending on how you use your grinder, that break-in period or seasoning the burrs as other people would call it. So depending on how often you use your grinder, if you're making four to five shots of espresso a day, it's probably gonna take six weeks to about two months to fully season the burrs, maybe even a little bit longer. But if you're brewing filter coffee, this can take up to a year, if not longer. Now, I think that this is definitely not a huge deal because every burr grinder needs seasoning. That's pretty common, especially on prosumer high level burr grinders, but I just find with the niche, it's just extra long, especially if you're not using this for espresso. So again, if you are buying this for filter coffee, there will be some frustration in the process and talking with so many friends who only use this for filter or maybe have bought it as a hybrid grinder, but they don't brew espresso that often. It's constantly a frustration that they're finding and brewing it for filter. It's just not broken in or it's just not seasoned. Other things I don't love about the Niche Zero are it's cheap feeling wood materials. Now you might notice on my model here, I've actually replaced all the wood that came on the Niche with some custom walnut. This was an amazing, amazing upgrade for me. And I'll link the carpenter down below who did this he's based out of Europe necessary absolutely not and the wood is totally fine on the niche but it did feel cheap especially for the money that you're spending and then a unique thought here this is a grinder that is built in China despite being a British company now maybe not a big deal here but other companies like Eureka, Optiono, and Weber are building their grinders locally, and I think that needs to be celebrated for the money that we're spending on a grinder like this. Again, that's not gonna really affect the grind quality or the reliability. Again, I've had no issues with my Niche Zero. Take that for what you will. I'd love to hear your comments on that down in the comments below. One more thing, this is a four-year-old design, and it's got no new updates or upgrades since it's launched. Now, we've gotten two things. We've gotten a new dose cup that is rounded in the interior with a shiny material, and that's really helped with grinds getting stuck which was just a huge issue in the beginning with the earlier dose cup. And then we've got a niche flow control disc that helps with popcorning of beans. And that's definitely helped in so many ways as well. Despite those two updates, I would love to see some other options for the niche. I definitely would have loved to seen a new color on the niche. I mean, just imagine a matte black niche. 
I don't know. It would be cool to see Niche do something like this. As well, it would be awesome to see a flat burr option of the Niche Zero. Now we're gonna talk about some of these options that you can buy from other manufacturers later in this video, so stick around. But this is definitely something I would love to see from Niche themselves. Come on, let's see some flat burrs. I would absolutely love that for the Niche or a new model of the Niche with some flat burrs. And if you would like to see that, like this video and let me know down in the comments below. So while we have seen some mod their grinders like Eureka Mignos and Sete 270s with bellows and single dose hoppers to accomplish the same feats that Niche Zero has, these options are niche pun intended, and not realistic for most people just wanting to make coffee at home. So in 2021, given the past year, more than ever, people are brewing coffee at home. So let's talk about other options we can now buy in 2021 to combat the niche cereal. But before we get to those, I wanna tell you really quick the sponsor of today's video, which is Standart Magazine. So Standart is a coffee magazine for the home barista or somebody who just wants to brew better coffee at home. I'm loving one of their articles that is all about an emerging origin in Bolivia. So right now, some of my favorite coffee in the world is from Bolivia. And to be able to open this up in one of the first few pages of Standart to see a well-documented and beautiful pictured article about Bolivia was an absolute treat for me. Now one other thing I love about Standart Magazine is that every issue comes with a great sample of some great coffee from around the world. This month we're getting a sample from Say which is a micro roastery in Brooklyn, New York and this is just an absolute treat for me. StandartMag.com forward slash Kyle. If you use that link in the description or use StandartMag.com forward slash Kyle it'll help out this channel. I'll get a small commission back and you'll be able to sign up for an amazing subscription in Standart Magazine. Thank you Standart for sponsoring this video. Okay, let's talk about some low retention home grinders that are some alternatives to the niche zero. I'm gonna list them out here and at the end of this video, I'm gonna go through each one and give some more explanation of these home grinders. The first one being the DF64. This is a Chinese grinder that is taking the coffee industry by storm. We've also got the Baratza Sete 270, which has been around for a while, but definitely a tried and true low retention grinder that is affordable, that uses plastic parts. The Option Olegome P64, which is newer to the industry within the past few years, but an absolute beast of a home grinder. You've then got hand grinders like the Chestnut X, Kinu, and then Easy Pressos that are making both fantastic espresso and filter coffee, and they're pretty quick to grind as well. And then you've got newly announced grinders like the Eureka Mino Single Dose, which I'm incredibly excited for. We'll talk about just in a second, but this is directly in response to the Niche Zero from Eureka. You've got Weber Workshops Key and Goat Stories Arco, which is both a hand grinder and electric grinder that promises low retention. And then you've got some more that are in development as well and on the market. Now here's the deal. While the Nistro was revolutionary in its design and price bracket, it has now paved the way for the rest of the industry. An industry that doesn't feel niche should hog all the sales to themselves. Like I mentioned, since the launch of the Niche Zero, there have been no large updates or upgrades. We've received a new dose cup and NFC disc. Other than this, it has remained untouched and unupdated. And yet in 2021, they still seem to sell out of every single drop. So in many ways, I would say that Niche has done something correct here. It's commendable, there's no doubt. With all the options available for home coffee grinders in 2021, is the Niche still worth it? Or should you opt for one of the newer options. Yeah, I, I mean, maybe, I, I believe this answer is dependent on your situation. And I'd love to break down the current landscape that we have to help make sense of all of this. Now, if you don't mind sacrificing on build quality for a more budget-friendly grinder, maybe using plastic parts, louder motors, and exclusively espresso grind settings, but the grind quality is consistent and great with low retention, I personally opt for the Baratza Sete 270. It has had issues with reliability in the past, but it seems like Brazza has really had a handle on this and their customer service is fantastic. So if you do wanna save some money and you want a great home grinder for espresso, pretty much exclusively. They advertise that can do filter coffee, but in my experience, just not the case. Again, I do have a full video on the Bratz Sete 270, I'll link right here. Now, if we wanna change the conversation, we want a grinder with better build quality than the Sete, but cheaper than the Niche, I'd personally go with the newer DF64. Like I mentioned, this is a very popular grinder right now with newer videos coming on the internet. And to break it down, it uses flat burrs, has slightly less charming aesthetic, slightly more static, and workflow that requires slightly more thought and attention. But the DF64 is a great option that should be considered if you're in the market for the Niche Zero. And many are opting for this over the Niche fourth value results and availability. 
To further this conversation, if you're willing to spend more and your budget isn't as tight, you want the end game home grinder and possibly with flat burrs over the conical set in the niche, the Legome P64 from Optiono is another niche killer with fantastic build quality and no sacrifices. The Legome may be a better option for those wanting the best filter coffee as well, given that they offer different burr options for your needs and some designed for filter coffee and others for espresso and then some in between. But at double the price in the niche, is the Legome P64 double the grinder? I, I think for some it might be, but for most, maybe not. So what about the niche? Well, if you want the original, the grinder that started the trend in this home grinder market, there's no denying that this is the grinder that others have been inspired from. If you want the best value and build quality combination available while not sacrificing anything, if you're willing to wait for them to come back in stock and you're happy with the conical burst set in the niche, if you find yourself wanting a low retention grinder that can do both espresso and filter with the limitations on filter, and you're willing to spend between six to $700 and you want a grinder that will last with metal chassis and reliable parts, the Niche Zero is still one of the best options for most people. Now I did reach out to Niche asking if they're willing to share anything that they're working on. And although I do have a good relationship with the people over at Niche, they do like to keep things pretty quiet and there was no comment towards their future. So all that to say, I'm pretty excited to test grinders like the Eureka Mignon single dose with 65 millimeter flappers and Weber Workshop's key with its 83 millimeter conical burst set to see how they compare against the niche. But even if they are better than the niche, there's no denying that their inspiration came from the British throne. I mean, look at this grinder. Now I do have a key on order and I hope to get a Eureka single dose to compare. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet and turn on notifications so you don't miss that video. Truly, it takes two seconds. It would really help me to be able to continue to make videos like this. But before you go, I'd love your take on this. Do you think Nisha will release an update to the Zero anytime soon? If so, what would you like to see? Are you waiting for a Niche Zero to come back in stock or have you pulled the trigger on something else? If you have a Zero, are you happy with your purchase and what changes would you like to see? Let me know down in the comments below. Niche might be looking at those, so down below. Now, I will see you all next time. Go brew a hot one. Bye.